today we're going to be talking with artist Julie Gendron and with Dr. Katinka Stachina, the neuroscientist that worked with Julie. Join me for the interview. I work on spinal cord neural circuits and uh, I try to uh, reconstruct all the network and the connections between different cells in the spinal cord and how they subserve the function that we generate when we are trying to move our legs, walk, and interpret every sensory information as we are walking. I've seen uh, some of my colleagues uh, and their artist colleagues' works when the Manitoba Neuroscience Network first uh, had a um, partnership or a, a series of partnerships together. And I was really inspired by that exhibition. And the Neurocraft was the name of this exhibition. And uh, also, at the different conferences, whenever I traveled to, more and more of these art science shows started to come about. And they always attracted me just to give my mind a little break and try to look at something pleasing, something nice, and I thought it was really a unique way to communicate some of the abstract and some of the beauty of the science that we are doing every day in the lab. Katinka is very warm and generous about giving the information and was totally capable of getting online with me to talk about uh, what was happening. So I felt, I felt disappointed that I didn't get to know her more on a face-to-face kind of way, uh, but really pleased with how it worked. And so originally I wanted to do some work around, I had proposed doing work around data and the data that, uh, she, that she was producing through her research. I found it was extremely specific and uh, extremely micro. I continued to try to dig by talking more and more about the different things that she did and were, was able to come up with different ideas. I, I totally remember that visit, and it was so interesting because here I was expecting an artist coming in, looking around, and just seeing things. And Julie brought a whole a series of equipments, more than what we had in the lab, with a giant microphone, and then she had a different cover for it to improve what she was recording. So it was really, uh, you know, what, what I expected as the artist's first visit at, at first. And I was just so amazed because of her already, like, at the beginning, she understood all the depths of the, like we did video recordings and audio recordings and all the different parts that are like on top of the science and they help us to understand and listen to the scientific pieces better. And I was just so intrigued by the fact that you can tackle all of these different levels of information also as an artist. I mean, I knew about digital artists, but I really didn't understand the depths of the work they were doing or they were really looking at to pull out what and how to help to interpret some of the information like a scientist would get or see. Yes, so I work in technology quite a bit uh, with different, and I'm always learning new technologies. So it takes a certain amount of an analysis to even unpack some of that stuff. And I'm really intrigued about how complicated science can get and, you know, may have been something that I would have done if I had decided to go in a different direction if something else had happened. So I understood, uh, of course, I don't understand everything. There's a lot of complication to it, a lot of extreme particulars about it that, um, like, even though I've concentrated on the vertebrae and each part of this presents a different part of the vertebrae, I couldn't actually tell you which number and letter they belong together. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it is. Sometimes I miss explaining those to my students because of the different types of animals or species that we work on have different numbers. So <laughs> the numbers are <laughs> variable. Yes, that's right. They but change. one of the uh, biggest thing was for me also in communicating with you throughout this uh, journey is that how do I go from specific to more general? And what do other people see in the spine <laughs> or the spinal cord? And I really appreciated your questions about how to you know, what the new ideas that you brought in us to make it more general, or what, what would a, another person see in this? You, you kept asking me this in a way that I felt like I needed to be thinking more about. And it, it was something like the balloon idea you had here, that it's, uh, you know, how to represent it, the brain versus the spinal cord, was also like uh, a really good, like, yeah, that's a really generalizable, really great concept is how I felt when we had our discussions and conversations about the work throughout the, throughout the process. 
Because Katinka had said, you know, the brain receives information from all the entire body and, and the brain actually is not the deciding factor. Mm -hmm. There's all of these signals coming from all different parts of the body. And that's what I found intriguing and that's how we got to the balloon. And each one of these, this is really literal, each one of these is a section of uh, the vertebrae or spine or the nerves within the spine. And each one of these in a human represents a connection that would happen. Of course, it's metaphorical <laughs> and not very specific. Um, but, and then the, through the str strings of the nerves that send it up to the balloon, which is the brain. <laughs> so some of the things that we also talked about in terms of the research that Katinka is doing is that there's more than just signals running through the nerves to the brain. There's other things happening potentially. Uh, and of course, I'm going to say it's metaphorical and it's not specific. Uh, but there was ideas around serotonin in the column and um, ideas about memory proteins being there. And so in terms of what you see in the video, it's very specific to me. It's a personal kind of rendition of my life. This one is from a part of my life what was very disturbing, something that happened to me. So it was memories coming out. You know, that may not be exactly what the research is, and I'm going to let you talk about it a little bit, but um, these are some of the thoughts I was having about it. Right, so some of the uh, important uh, molecules that help walking as an actual function in us, it's serotonin, as you mentioned, but it's also uh, the most uh, general or well-known fact about serotonin that it's the hormone of happiness as well, and it helps uh, memory formation how, and in the brain and in the spinal cord we don't really understand in what context it functions and it may be related to how we are moving and how we are generating sensory information with each step we take and every sensation when our arm moves or the whole any body part moves it helps to solidify some of the synapses that are active and it helps us to build a motor map and a motor functional circuit basically that work together in certain actions mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, the first research project we talked about with Julie was the serotonin project and uh, I think this is really well represented that it has at so many levels of the spinal cord it is there it is known to be having some function and all together it allows us not just the spinal neurons but also the brain neurons to keep all this information to build up a set of information from movement to build up a set of information from all the things we see, the things we hear in the brain and store it in our brain as, as memories. Mm -hmm. So there is a global role of serotonin building up from the spine up and uh, the TV screens, I really like those uh, also because they emphasize that there is something going on behind the scene, right? Okay. Like, like I keep uh, thinking that when I think of spinal microcircuits and the little connections between those neurons, it's like the perfect representation of those is something going behind on the TV screens. <laughs> the other thing that it has a part of it too that I was thinking about is the brain as being a, an area of the body that controls everything. Um, and so I like the idea of it being floating up in the air um, and relating it back to community and relating it back to different ideas of decentralizing decision making and power structures. So that's a little bit more complicated and I could probably get into it more, but there's an essay in the catalog, so <laughs> you can read that. <laughs> Thank you to both Julie Gendron for talking about her work and Dr. Katinka Stachina. Thank you so much for coming to the gallery today to talk about the science and the art. I'd like to remind everyone that we will be open again soon. Please watch our website. Be sure to watch for our other series of videos, which is with Sari Hanala, where we talk about the science. <laughs>